of the first part would be just like the Briggs movements or strikes where you're just the hand comes down comes up for your eighth notes so the first three bars are easily executed like this just a strike going up and a straight going down there. Now the fourth bar has these four eighth notes that descend and I put slurs on them. A lot of times when you have descending notes if you can put slurs on them they take on a whole different character. If you didn't slur them I'll just use a pick to, to uh, demonstrate that. That's a lot different than and the same with the first part. If you use strikes it just sounds different than if the notes were executed with a, a, a plectrum or on uh, some other instrument where you are playing the notes that are written, but something changes in the lilt of the, of the sound. Here would be with a pick. But when you use strikes, and slurs, you get that. Now even then in that fourth bar with the slurs, um, what I've done is I've employed the, the uh, hammer movement from the converse analytical to hit the first eighth note, and then I slur that second one. Same there, so you end up with two hammer strokes. And you just go right into the hammer from the uh, uh, combination move. Now, Converse in the 1887 book does something called a long combination, which um, I think is a great, great move. Um, might be a little harder to execute, and I don't think people think of that a lot when they see these, but if you take fiddle music and you're arranging it yourself and you see a passage that has descending notes, you could do what you call the long combination. So the long combination would be like this. <laughs> And you can see it's all done with one down and one up, even though I have four notes. So I, I come down on the first one, then pull, and then come up like that. Okay, so you get a really neat uh, articulation to that. And it's really a minimum of emotion with that hand. You get, with one strike, you get four notes calls that the long combination. Um, and then at the end of the piece, uh, that section in bar uh, eight, uh, seven and eight, you get this. You got a slur of three notes, and then that one. So I did that with two hammers. Now instinctually, that's what I uh, go towards when I see a group of notes like that. This could also be done with a long combination like this. Okay. So the first three notes would be a slur from the downstroke of the first finger. And then pull up and uh, pull off on that one. Okay, so that just gives you a lot of options there, and they're, they're both good ways to play that. Now what I want to in the second section is what you call a parallel minor and a lot of times you have pieces that are um, using the, the minor chord in that position. It's a, it's a very, very common move. So you pretty much treat it the same way. So it's no big deal. Now I get to the twelfth uh, bar there and you have this phrase which the notes go you could play that all with your thumb if you wanted, but it's much cooler if you uh, use articulation like that. So what I did was uh, I slurred the first one, and on the next one, hit that note, and then do the rice pull in the left hand. Okay. So you don't even need your right right hand for the last uh, very last note. So that first uh, part of that section goes. And on that one, uh, on bar 
are 16, 15 and 16. You can end that with a long combination like that. Get a hammer on that one, or two hammers. That's real easy to do, and that'd be my first instinct to do that. section measures 17 through 24. You get these cool chords or brush chords like you'd find in Briggs, Corn, Shuck, and Jig. Okay. And you use that open thumb string for the for the high note. Strike and then kind of a similar move that we've had before except it goes all the way down. Okay, I use the hammer stroke to hit the first note of each of those phrases. Sounds way different than... That can be done with a long combination too. Like a double the thumb up at the end there. And then the chords coming in. And then slurs and a combination. Thank you.